Hey guys, I'm Rick and welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today we're going to be doing another cooler review and we're going to be reviewing the CryoRig M9. CryoRig is a company that is not that well known yet in North America. However, if you've been building PCs and you look regularly into stuff, they're not, it's not a rare brand. You can find it, it's just not one of the most commonly found brands. And the M9 was interesting to me because it's actually, this is the first time I'm ever going to review a CryoRig cooler. So it was my first experience. And before we go too deep into the review, let's start as usual with an overview of what the cooler is offering and give you guys a close up on what it looks like. So the CryoRig M9 is a, a classic tower style cooler. It comes with three six millimeter copper heat pipes and an aluminum heat sink. This time around, we're looking at a 92 millimeter fan that can spin up to 2200 RPM. And it's combined with a four pin uh, connector, meaning that it is PWM compatible. Uh, the cooler itself is actually rated for up to 120 watts TDP. And it comes, uh, a special feature is that it comes with a full copper and nickel plated co uh, base plate. Uh, the, the compatibility for this cooler is actually a variable, which we'll get into more details in a couple of seconds. Uh, overall, its special features are that this cooler comes with also with a topper, a plastic top plate on the top for aesthetic purposes. So now that you guys got a good look on the cooler, uh, there's a couple of points. Some of them we already mentioned that we're gonna go over. The first thing that's most important when purchasing this cooler is you have to know that there are two separate models depending on whether you're pairing it with an AMD system or an Intel system. So basically the M9A for AMD is the one compatible obviously for AMD and the M9i is the one that is compatible for Intel systems. Um, the best reason I can give is that the mounting system on these coolers are actually quite elaborate. They take, they take like three separate parts to actually attach the cooler to uh, the motherboard, meaning that probably CryoRig didn't want to have to include like six different brackets with each cooler so that it would be compatible both for AMD and Intel. So you actually have to choose which one you're gonna purchase before, depending on what type of system you think you're gonna be mounting the cooler on. It's a good thing, but if you build a lot of systems and you like reusing your coolers, the downside is if you're switching from AMD to, uh, from, from Intel to AMD or back and forth, you're going, you won't be able to keep the same cooler from one system to the other. The other thing that's important to know as well is that if you're rocking uh, Ryzen and AM4 as I am, you're also going to need an upgrade kit. So it's an extra purchase. Me, it cost me five bucks extra on Newegg. I invested it so that I could give this review for you guys, but it is a downside to this cooler which pushes its price up. Talking about price, it's uh, MSRP is about 30 bucks. Uh, I did manage to find it uh, at, at one place for 25 bucks, but it was constantly out of stock. So either it was a price that hasn't been updated in a long time and they haven't had any stock in, or uh, possibly it's just that since they have such a low price, it gets sold out very quickly. Um, as we mentioned, the two important parts that set it apart, I'd say for most other coolers in this price bracket, is the uh, top plate that comes with the cooler. So aesthetically, it's a very good looking cooler from the top because it comes with this plastic top plate that gives it a little bit of styling. And the second thing is that you have a solid copper base plate on it. Uh, it's it, honestly, this cooler resembles a lot the Be Quiet cooler we reviewed earlier, the Pure Rock 92 millimeters. I think it's the Pure Rock Slim 92 millimeter. Um, in the sense that it also invested a little bit extra time into aesthetics with a top plate and a solid copper base plate like this. It's nice to see on these coolers uh, and I'd say it's the main focus of the companies. It's what sets them apart from other $30 coolers in this uh, range. Um, it also, a uh, last thing to note is that it does come as well with 
all the brackets needed for attaching a second fan. So you actually have plastic inserts here that dampen the noise and the vibration to the heatsink, and it comes with the brackets needed. Um, same comment I made on every other cooler in this price range that come with brackets for a second fan. The problem is, is when you factor in the price for a second fan, there's better options out there. Like if you had 10 or 15 bucks for a second good fan on this cooler, well, you're in a different price category and there's better options out there than buying this $30 cooler, adding a second fan. And I'm actually going to look into it in a separate video. I plan on taking all the coolers that have the brackets for the second fan, putting a second fan and seeing how much better it is. I'm, I'm not expecting to get much because we don't have really very thick uh, uh, aluminum stacks. So I'm not sure you're actually going to get that much more out of them with a second fan, but we'll test that in a, in a separate video. So without further ado, what you guys are here for, let's talk about performance. So the first graph for, oh, before, sorry, I always forget, uh, just to explain to you how I do my testing a little bit, all the coolers are tested on the same Ryzen 3 1200, overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. And um, for the sound testing, basically I use my portable sound meter, which is placed about a foot away from the fan. And I capture the highest sound level emitted over about a one to two minute period. So that is how I capture the sound uh, evaluations. Now, like I said, the graph should be up on the screen. Let's look over the uh, cooling performance to begin with. So. This cooler actually has very decent cooling performance. It's right up there. It's slightly behind the Be Quiet that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this cooler was at 30 degrees above ambient. So obviously the graphs that you're seeing as well are delta temperatures, meaning that we factor out the ambient temperature and you only see the difference. It puts all the coolers on the say, you know, on a comparable scale. So it's not the best performing cooler but it is hanging in there with the big boys, although it's about three or four degrees off of the liters. Um, so overall, decent performance cooling wise, but not the best. Uh, if we look at noise, noise, I was actually really surprised because for a fan that spins up to 2200 RPM, and by the way, when I do my testing, I lock the fans at 100% all along. So it really is the maximum sound emitted. It actually, uh, matched the best uh, cooler we had so far sound wise which was the be quiet pure rock slim so this cooler was only at 42 decibels which is actually pretty quiet and considering that most of the time this cooler will probably be spinning under 100 percent like probably somewhere in the 50 percent range uh, it's a whisper quiet fan under stock settings and under normal circumstances so it is a very very quiet fan i was pleasantly surprised about this i think the combination of the top plate and the dampeners the plastic dampeners that they install on the heat sinks really shows off for this cooler so it's a good thing to know um, now let's look at the good and the bad because i'm sort of in between for this cooler um, reason why is because like I said it's not the strongest performer however as I said in my previous review for the be quiet if you're rocking a Ryzen 3 and even a low Ryzen 5 or an i3 or a low i5 you actually don't need to go any more performant than these coolers and it's fun that for the same price they've invested in aesthetics rather than raw performance so it is actually, in my opinion, one of the best options for someone rocking a low level processor because the heat given off, you don't actually need the big boys out there to get to overclock your systems to the max. You can still do that with these coolers and you get the extra added touch where you have a little bit higher aesthetics in your system. Now, what I was getting to is that it's, it's really hard to choose between this cooler or the Be Quiet, because basically the Be Quiet is performing just as well sound and temperature wise. And it comes down to two things. Number one, unfortunately, the mounting system is much more complex than the Be Quiet. However, at the same time, one important thing to note is that the Be Quiet in my previous review, I did mention it, 
you can only set it in one direction, which is going basically top from bottom or bottom from top in your system. You actually can set it horizontally because of the way the mounting bracket is. It sets on to the motherboard and it can only be one directional. The mounting system is much more complex on this one, but it also allows you to choose if you want top from bottom, bottom for top, or if you want horizontal for your system, which is an added bonus. But at the same time, because if you're going with AM4, you have to get the upgrade kit, you're actually paying like five to $10 more for this cooler in the end once you factor in shipping and all that. So it really comes down to how important, you know, which one do you aesthetically like the best? So if you guys are looking for this type of cooler, I invite you to go look at my review for the Be Quiet uh, Pure Rock Slim because it really is a, a like performance wise and you know what it's offering wise it's it's the closest most comparable cooler i've reviewed so far but it comes down to which one's aesthetics you like better and if it's really important for you to be able to install the cooler horizontally well then it is maybe worth the extra five or ten bucks on the you know on this price of the on the price of the cooler overall and over a whole system an extra five bucks isn't necessarily that huge of an investment but it really comes down to that so overall i can recommend this cooler because it it performs very well for the low level processors even for a ryzen a high ryzen 5 ryzen 7 or an i a high i5 or i7 this cooler can still do a very decent job it's just that raw performance wise maybe you won't be able to hit the highest overclocks possible or you'll need a case with very good um, airflow to assist the cooler in really getting that cool air in there and cooling the system down to the max. So I hope you guys liked the review. Down there, there will be the links for Canada for Newegg for purchasing this cooler and for uh, the US, the links will be to Amazon most likely. Uh, as usual, I also have my Patreon link down there. So if you guys wanna support the channel directly, help me make more videos, get more products more quickly. I invite you, all the money for the moment from Patreon will be reinvested directly into the channel. So getting more content out there for all of you that follow me. And as usual, uh, likes and follows are very appreciated. It helps the channel grow quicker. And once again, same, same, same goal, get more content out for you because I love making these videos for you guys. So please like and please subscribe. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.